Hello and welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today we're doing a project that I've wanted to do for such a long time and I've done bits and pieces of different ones but each time I've had to stop due to not the right tools or whatever. Today we are going to be making a rocket stove to send Lily off into space in a rocket. Um, to spend daddy in a... and to Mars. Where's a rocket? And he's a bucket. Okay, so yeah, we're going to be making a rocket stove. Yeah. So we've already made sodium silicate, which you can watch how we did that up here above Lily's head. Get down, head down. And we're using a perlite, an old barrel, and some tubing. So enjoy the process. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, and let's get on. Blech. <laughs> Okay, a good rule of thumb when making a rocket stove is to check the diameter of your, the tube you're going to use just for the chimney while you're let, waiting for all of the other stuff to set. It, the height of your rocket stove should be three times the diameter of the tube. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so the height of my barrel that I'm going to be using for the main body of the rocket stove is just over 30 centimetres, 300 millimetres. And... Diameter of my pipe is just over 10 centimeters. So three times that is the height of my rocket stove. So this pipe should be perfect. Okay, so we need to decide how long we need to cut this pipe. We obviously aren't gonna to wanna to touch, have it touching the floor of the barrel because we need some insulation from the, per, um, the perlite here. I think what I'm gonna do is measure the tube against the barrel and then decide how thick I want the uh, insulation at the bottom and then I'll take that off of the overall size. Okay so this mark here is the height of the barrel and I'm gonna want um, I think I'm gonna want about an inch and a half of um, insulation at the bottom. So let's go for about let's say four centimeters. So we're going to want to cut it about here. Okay, so we've marked our line where we want to cut, but we're not going to cut straight across. We're going to cut it at a 45 degree angle. This meaning we can make it um, an L shape out of it, which I'll explain once I've cut it, so it'll be a lot easier to explain with visual cues. This is now my chimney, like this, and it will come up the top like that, and if you have a look, that's our L shape that we're going for. Now what I need to do is cut a bit off here to make sure it will poke out through here, and then we can place them both in, compact the um, perlite and everything around it, then once it's dry enough, we can wiggle them both out. We should have a perfect chimney and um, place to put all of the fuel. Okay, so this doesn't have to be too exact, it just needs to be fitting in the middle and we need some out the front. So if we just say an arbitrary mark there, it just means there's definitely enough to get to the centre of this um, and meet up with this pipe that will be going down once we've cut our hole somewhere down here. This cut has to be at 90 degrees, well it can be at any, any um, degrees you want right now, any angle, because this is just going to be the, the bit that sticks out the front of the the rocket stove while we're waiting for it to dry. We're going to drill a hole somewhere around here and this will go inside and then this one will plop straight on top like that 
and that's our chimney there. So now we'll have to cut the hole in the side of the tank, uh, in the side of the drum thing. Okay, now we want to cut a hole in the side of this that's exactly the same size as these. Possibly a little bit smaller, because if it's a little bit smaller, it's more of a wiggle to get it in. So what we need to do, if we just, actually no, turn it up the other way. If we just go around this, Then cut this out, and when we place it on this, it will it will actually go to the same shape, and we can cut that around. I'll show you what I mean in a sec. Be as precise as you can at this point, because otherwise you'll be having to fill in holes later on and it'll be a lot a lot worse off for yourself. Okay, now what I'll say is, if we then place this over our thing, we can draw around it now and it will bend with the shape of the barrel, but we'll still fit this in exactly however and wherever we want it. So we measured four centimeters up from the bottom, so let's do that bit first. Okay. Now if we place the the center bottom of our circle on that. You can start going around it. Now, obviously, don't use a blinking knife. You'd have to be a moron to use a knife to scratch it away. So, find something that's a bit more sensible and go with that. The only issue I've got here that I'm not that I'm not sure about is because of this beveled bit here. This might actually throw the circle off slightly, but it doesn't matter. Um, we'll, we'll still try it and see what happens. Now I'm going to try and follow the circle as best I can. I've got this now because it's a tiny bit safer. And I'm just going to scratch around the hole, around the circle I mean. Can it, is that, yeah, that's viewable. And then I could possibly get away with using a HB pencil. Should I try that? Yeah. I think I'll try that. See how this works. Do you want me to hold it down? What no, no. Thank you though. Now we're gonna go up over the bevel, still following the contours of the circle, hopefully. It's quite a fiddly job, but do it carefully and do it right. as close to right as you can. There we go. Now this should theoretically, I'm going to Fill up that as well. This should theoretically fit the pipe quite snugly and quite tight. I'm not sure how I'm going to cut this out yet. It's, it's very thin, so I might be able to use tin snips, but I might also use a, my Dremel. I'll be back when I've decided what I'm doing.
Okay, and here's the moment of truth. Will it actually fit in? Oh, look at that. Did you get one Perfect. What I need to do now is have a look inside. It's not complete, you know, I need to push it in more than that, but then these two will link up like this when they're pushed into the centre. Can you see? And that will be start of our rocket stove. Okay, so I've just um, softened up the edges around here on the inside to stop it being like sharp and everything. And it will be something like this. And what we'll do, we'll pound it in the, the perlite first, making a nice um, bed under here. And then we'll place this in, we'll start to pile it up around. And slowly we'll pop this in constantly tamping the perlite around the edges holding this in place and then once it's had time to dry um, we'll slowly remove it out and hopefully it will keep its form so we can hopefully do some slow burns and possibly introduce some carbon dioxide because we're using sodium silicate and perlite which uh, sodium silicate reacts with carbon dioxide and goes solid so we'll do some tests with that as well, I think.